Have you already started a digitization project in your library or archive? Do you have family materials in need of digitization? Does your community church have records in need of preservation? Preservation of paper materials through digitization provides accessibility of information to many different communities around the world. Digitization also contributes to protect records from constant handling and damage. This video will guide you through a few basic steps on how to start digitizing small paper collections and personal memorabilia using cameras. You may ask why not use a scanner? Not all collections are suitable to use flat scanners, especially books. The pressure imposed to book spines when open may cause severe damage to the item. We can say photographing is a more gentle way to safeguard a collection. Planning is the best way to start your digitization project. Decisions made early on will guide the project steps and will help in avoiding unexpected obstacles. Start with a manageable amount of items to begin with, so you can accomplish it. The first project will serve as a learning tool which will later lead to more complex projects in the future. The best items to start with are usually those that are important to you or to your organization. Items in poor and delicate condition are in need of special attention. There are few ways to partially stabilize the materials without actually altering or adding to the original object. For example, using an interleaving support between fragile paper while digitizing. This will provide a more clear image of the content and support while turning the pages. Contact a conservation or preservation professional for the best practices in handling and stabilizing these materials prior to digitization. After choosing what to digitize, the most important steps in your project are Select your equipment Create an initial description of the item Set up and stabilize the equipment, photograph the material, and save the images. There are a variety of cameras on the market. The University Libraries Field Project team tested several of them, as you see in this image. Experiments were done to create a low-cost, portable platform. There are few important points to consider when digitizing materials. A grid screen is useful to have the item squared, leveled, and parallel. This feature will later help when editing, strengthening, and cropping. An image sensor size is important in determining the resolution, even more than the megapixels. Most smartphones use a tiny image sensor, while a bigger camera has a bigger sensor. So the bigger the sensor size, the better the image will be. Digital noise is a visual distortion and it looks like grain on the image. The film speed, usually called ISO, together with the shutter speed, will determine how clean the image is. 
Basically, if you use an ISO 100, the result will be a much crisper image than if you use an ISO 400. For most people, it makes sense to use an automatic focus, but just be sure you check the image sharpness. Manual mode is a little bit more complex, but offers more flexibility to find the proper focus. There is a lot of good information available online regarding the specifics of camera. You can play with different settings on your camera to get more comfortable using it and finding the results you are looking for. The tripod is a vital and essential piece of equipment. It's impossible to handhold a camera and get a sharp image as you can when you are using a tripod. Using a grid under the material that will be digitized is also useful. This will help in centering the material every time you have to shoot a photo. Choose a good light source work close to a window, or if in a studio, use light from both sides. An extension arm will solve the issue of not being able to get close enough to the copy platform or stand, and also any problems you may have with the legs casting shadows on the item. Document what we will photograph before you start shooting the material. A brief initial description of the item with title, ownership, date and location will be much helpful later. Set up and stabilize the materials. A thick piece of glass can work very well for making the materials flatter while capturing the image. It might not work for every item, you will need to try and check the final results. Also be careful while handling the glass, and make sure the edges are protected. You can also use a bone folder or any other tool that's not sharp to hold the page down. Avoid putting too much pressure on the material you are working with, as it can cause damage. Proceed to photograph each page in a relatively short amount of time. Save the scans on at least two separate digital medias and keep them in separate locations. Digitizing and uploading the content to a website provides accessibility to collections in a quick and convenient way. As time goes by, technology becomes obsolete very fast and thus difficult, if not impossible, to copy over to an update device. Always update the format where you store your digitized collection doing constant backups. The UNCG University Library's mission includes the preservation of university history as well as Greensboro valuable and diverse historic materials contained in its archives. This broader initiative in preservation of these materials is accomplished often by partnering with local institutions and engaging the wider community. Benefits of digitizing historic books or documents are beyond our imagination and geographic boundaries. Library patrons, students, genealogists, and online researchers are just a few who will gain through accessibility. Don't wait too long. Start your digitization project now and bring history back to life in your community.